Tana Man, did you tell him about the live show we have coming up April 13th? It's a Saturday. Matchbox One Loudon, the Santana Mall show live, baby, from 1 to 3 p.m. In my neck of the woods, so come one, come all, and you'll see me and my dog, Ball. Can't wait. Keep watching the podcast every week like you always do for more details. And we'll see you there. All right, Tana, let's tell them about our game day BOGO deal. Mm-hmm. That's your line. That you're, I'll read it, I guess. Paisanos is bringing it big time every Sunday. Go ahead, Tana. Tana, that's your... You can buy any large pizza and get a second pizza for free. Tell them, Tana. Uh, use the online code BOGO Pizza on the app or online. And then what can they do with the second pizza, Tana? <laughs> second pizza's free with equal or lesser value. I'm. Can I have... I'm going to eat. I don't care. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I done spilled all over myself. Coming up on the Santana Mall Show, we take a look back at my week and my fun charitable outings. It's always adventurous with the Tanner Man. By the way, Colt McCoy is on crutches, but no need to panic, people. The madness is here, and our brackets mean diddly. Let's see whose teams are still standing on me and Trav's brackets. I don't have many left, but we will preview the Sweet 16. And some nerve of this guy. He got the nerve to put the king as am I taking there. Boy, stop. The Santana Moss Show podcast starts right now. Woo! It's a Santana Moss Show. Home of the Blue Ball Dream. Number 89. Hustle all the time. Travis on the right. Hot mic on the left. Every single week, it's a Larry Gold uh, 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 uh. Santana Moss Show podcast is in full effect. Travis Thomas, Santana Moss. Like that? That's my dog. What's That's up? my dog. What you been up to, man? I seen on your Instagram. This how, I, this how I figure out what you've been up to, even though I don't really know what you've been up to. I saw roller skating, and I saw Benzo sitting on Lorenzo's. Mm, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Oh, I had a busy week. Uh, one of the things that um, I do, especially when it comes to uh, charities, I, I like to give. And if I'm not giving, it's, it's out my pocket. It's my time. Uh, last week was pretty busy. Um, I started off the week after this show uh, aired. I had a chalk talk uh, at Redskin Park. Oh, wow. Um, the rental car uh, enterprise, mm-hmm. they had a bunch of their workers and different people that's supposed to be investing or whatever they had going on um, come out and just eat dinner with me. And, and I, me and Larry set up there on stage and just share some stories. You know wow. what I mean? It's a little, a little semi-chalk talk, and then we opened the floor up for, you know, questions and stuff like that. Uh, I moved on to that. From, from there, the next day, I was at Mercedes-Benz of Arlington. They was uh, displaying their new A-Series. Um, it's a car that they said started at thirty four thousand. Hold up, a Ben starting a at thirty four. Thirty four thousand. If you sit in that thing, it look like you riding the S class. I say, you know what? If I was a young buck right now, I'd be doing all the chores, making sure mom and dad know that I want this right here. They say, Tanner, how old are your kids? I say, yeah, I got one in nineteen, but don't tell them about this car. Don't tell them about this car. <laughs> wow. And, yeah. I mean, well, you I know, was, I'm balling on a budget, so bro, you talking my language? Thirty four thousand. Right I say. Well, I might be pulling up in one of these right. things, put some 18s on it or something. Wow. Um, no, the car was definitely that deal, you know, and I got a chance to meet some some um, great, you know, uh, business people and rub some elbows with a lot of folks who's want to partake in a lot of things that I'm doing in the community. So it was a great outing. And the finish, roll bounce. Yeah. What was the roll bounce? Finish the week off, man. <laughs> um, we went over to Winchester. <laughs> uh, how this thing got started, I don't know how. I know I had spent some time in Fort Royal. I spun some time in um, another spot out that way. And, you know, Winchester's been an area that a couple of my um, kids out of my camps, their parents, you know, they live out in that area, and they tell me, hey, man, you got a lot of fans out here, and we'd love for you to come back in the area and do something. And one, if you know me, you know that I like to, you know, hey, you know what, why not? You know, a lot of other guys probably say, okay, yeah. I said, let's go out there. And a, a good friend of mine, um, Stu, he put on a – 
a, a skating event. I met Stu. Yeah, I know met Stu. Stu a couple of times. Stu was always with me. I like him. Um, he put on a skating event, and you know, just got the fans to come on. Good, you know, fin, family and friend, you know, fun. Uh, event. Yeah. We went out there and had had a good time skating. I got blisters on my feet right now from the <laughs> skates. But you ain't fall down though. But I ain't fall that not one. I'm saying I I caught myself trying to show off a little bit. Go. I'm I'm I saw the little kids getting to. It. They were skating back. I said I could do that too. I've been skating since I was four or five years right. old too myself. So you know. But I ain't got it like how them guys got it on road bounce. I got a couple of cousins that can skate. They get they get down on the skates, but. It's to me. I just get around there a little, a little quicker than others. Yeah. Other than that, I can't do no tricks and no dance. Did you see anybody like fall down and eat it the whole time? <laughs> it was fall. So look, they was laughing with me. A lot of the fans, a lot of the fr- uh, um, family members of some of the fans, they was laughing because they was like, "I'm." I was out there actually playing tag with these kids on skates. Right. Like I literally started skating from. Tag them skate all fast. From uh, the, the event started at four. I probably got there at five. Yeah. When I put my skates on, probably five five thirty ish. I didn't get off the floor until eight o'clock. Good God. I skated the entire time. I use it for some cardio. You know yeah. me. I'm gonna use it, get a workout of out course. of it. Of course. But I had fun, man. Just you know, those kids are everything. And you know, if you know how I think, um, like I said before, man, the things that I'm doing in the community. The things I'm trying to get and, and instill in these kids is letting them know that, man, look, I understand what you're going through. And I understand, you know, we know what this world is about. But it's a lot of positivity and a lot of positive people that you have to kind of link up with. You know, it's so much negative stuff being pulled and deciphered through some of these social, you know, networks yeah. and some of the things that they see on YouTube. You name it, you know, like the thing that went on YouTube a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I'm scared crazy about letting my kids you know you know because my, my daughters my son all of them you know watching youtube and stuff like that so you just try to make sure that you can be an influence of some sort and positive positive influence and that's all about me when you see me it's all positivity i'm not bringing nothing negative to you because i cut that stuff at the door you know i even cut the friends that's negative and the people you could be my friend i might like you but you're negative so i'm gonna keep you to a distance sure. because i like you enough and I'm so positive that I want to share what I have, but at the end of the day, I'm going to give it to you at a you know, uh, long spoon fed. One of the reasons why we get along so well, we both have positive energy, and that's one of the reasons I didn't come to your Roll Bounce event, because uh, I chose to be negative that day. <laughs> <laughs> I instead gambled heavily Woo! on March Madness and uh, participated in debaucherous type of behavior. I had a friend in town. Uh, every year, Santana, for like the last two or three years now, um, my buddy who lives on the Eastern Shore out Ocean City Way mm-hmm. comes in town, and we take off that Thursday and that Friday for the first uh, two days of the tournament, and uh, debauchery ensues. It's a lot of drinking. It's a lot of gambling. It's a lot of bad things. So mm-hmm. uh, that's why I didn't make it. There was a lot going on last weekend. Understood, bro. And I should have came to your thing instead. <laughs> Save some money. Because much like Tana, Trevi Trav, love the kids. But more on March Madness later. Dan, I want to start here. Colt McCoy has been seen on crutches. That makes two, if you're counting, Redskins quarterbacks who are on crutches right now. <laughs> Alex Smith and Colt McCoy. Although Colts is not as serious as Alex. Yeah. Uh, it was a cleanup procedure we found out. Just some maintenance, almost really preventative maintenance to make sure nothing happens. And and he'll be fine by the time the offseason program rolls around. But my question to you is, is actually very simple. And it's, as we see both of our quarterbacks on crutches, right? Is this more onus? Is this more pressure, quite frankly, to go get a Josh Rosen or to draft a quarterback at 15 overall in the first round. We've talked about this on the show, but as you see these things developing, is it not pushing the Redskins to make a decision for the future at the position? Well, you know what? Thinking about it and just hearing hearing the, the story you know, uh, take place, and I'm like, oh, that's going to give us something to talk about. But right. I, I can assure you that it's nothing really big to really – you know, uh, to be be long winded on. Right. Uh, I've been one of those guys. I remember I hurt my knee in my rookie season, and end up coming back for the last what four or five games. And they told me, hey, when the season's over, with, you might have to go in there for a cleanup. And I did that. So just when I saw that, I knew instantly that it probably was a cleanup because most of the guys and most of some of the analysts around town saw Coke. You know, probably the last couple of games of the season walking perfectly fine you know what I mean so it was always questions it's, it's questions now that oh maybe he got hurt he re-injured something maybe this and that no it's a cleanup but with all that said 
uh, I do believe that regardless of what Coach's doing now, whether he's on crutches or not, the way this thing has been set up, even going out and getting case, you know, I think they still have an opportunity to go out there and either get a quarterback in trade or a quarterback in the draft. I think that door is wide open. I do believe that saying, you know, because folks have been asking me on the streets, do you think Case Keenum is going to be a star? I said, look, Case Keenum, they didn't bring him here to sit down. They brought him in here to say, okay, we believe in Coke. We have a lot of confidence in him. But with that confidence, where have that got us as a team? You know, I understand he hasn't played much, but when he has gotten that opportunity, did we get a lot of wins out of that? And I'm not saying that's his fault because the defense plays a big part of that right. also. But just looking at the potential level, they say, why not go get a guy like Case Keenum that's available, that's cheap, that can give you the same or a little more? And with all that said, we might still have enough money to go out there and get a young guy that we can plan on for the future that maybe he can out he can beat out both of these guys if we make the competition level, you know, that high enough for him to go out there and compete for the job too. So I do believe that door is open. I, I, I think they 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 planning something big, you know. I'm not sure what it is. But, you know, Arizona hasn't been talking much about, you know, getting rid of Rosen yet. I was gonna ask and you, I think is that, that the move? That can be something that that kinda, you know, get heated when it come close to – you know, when that draft get to talking, yeah. we start talking draft a day or two later, moves start being made. Guys start changing positions in the draft, changing players. So I think the door is wide open for the Redskins to say, hey, we can either get a quarterback in the draft or if Josh Rosen come, comes available, maybe he might be a good trade for I'm us. nervous about Rosen as it pertains to the draft. Here's what I mean. If we're waiting till draft night, right – I would think Arizona's phone is going to be ringing off the hook for Rosen. Yeah. So essentially, you could get in a situation where you're just flat out outbid. Maybe some other desperate quarterback team out there says, we'll give you a one, right? Yeah. You know Arizona's pulling that trigger immediately. I don't think they'll get a one, but I'm just using mm-hmm. that for the sake of this conversation, right? So to me, if I'm the Redskins, what are you waiting for? Make them a fair deal now and get it done now. Yeah. Get Josh Rosen here now. That way you don't have to worry about it. And then you know what? These conversations in the media like we're having right now are done because you know they're not going quarterback. You have Keenum, you have Rosen, you have Colt McCoy. Boom, we're good. Mm-hmm. Let's go. At 15, take a safety or whatever the hell you're going to do. So to me, I, I just feel like I, I almost feel like trade or get off the pot in a way, not mm-hmm. to say they couldn't win a, a draft night trade, yeah. but I just think if you wait till then, you would have to give up more. Do you think I'm crazy? No doubt, no doubt. No, you're right. Shoot your wad now. I mean, yeah. if you're going to if you're gonna get them eventually, get them now. So, you know, I don't know what's going on with that, but it, it, it has to be Arizona. Arizona has to be the one that really pulled the trigger. They haven't pulled the trigger yet. I'm not sure if they're sure, you know, that, that they're going to make that trade or make that available. So... Uh, with all that said, yeah, if any team out there that feel that he can be a quarterback for their future, I'm sure there's a lot of them out there sitting there chopping at the bits, waiting for that opportunity to open. But I think that door has been closed prematurely. All right, so listen, I teased it earlier. Let's go there now. I'm holding up. Sound the trumpets. My sheet of integrity. And bracket me. Get it. <laughs> I'm laughing at that title because there's nothing integrity about the sheet. However, um, I, it's weird, Tana. My bracket's still intact. My Final Four is still alive. Uh, but my betting did not go too good. I did six bets. I laid them out on the show last week. I went two and four in those. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what's crazy about sports gambling. I know I'm close to being really good at it because out of those four losses, three of them were bad beats. They were all like a point. So I was so close, right? Uh, but you can't when you go up to that window to cash your ticket. No you can't victories, say I man. almost got. They're it's not going to get no you jack. More victories, correct. Son. They're not going to get you jack Nike. So I went two and four. However, uh, I did put a futures bet on UNC to win the entire thing. Mm. UNC wins. I got them at six to one odds. I put a hundred bucks. You do the math. I'm I'm turning out pretty good there. So. We'll see. I'm still alive in that one. I'm letting that ride. Um, how did you do with your bracket? And also, you know, what were kind of your thoughts of the opening weekend of March Madness? I thought it was kind of blah. There were no big upsets. There was no big upsets, but uh, when it comes down to my bracket, my bracket's 
pretty much intact. Brackets intact. It's right? intact. You know, we we clowned me a little bit last week talking about all the favorites I picked in. For the first time in, in in a lot of years, I think the last time this been this been done in 1985, I believe all all of those um, one seeds that made it to the uh, Sweet 16, it hasn't been done in a long time. So I, I don't know you. I, I don't know if you want to quote me on that, but I think I read that somewhere. <laughs> I'm quoting um, you on it. <laughs> but no, my my bracket is pretty much intact. You know, I I was I picked the favorite Duke. They they made it to the Sweet 16. What did you think of that game? I picked. Okay, so. The first game was one of those kind of Duke games that I wanted to see. It was it was kind of close at the half, and then second half, I was actually laughing because a friend of mine, I had him in mind, and I'm like, man, I wonder what Bub put on that. Did, did he bet Duke? When I saw them seat everybody, or, or they set like the starters at right. probably three minutes left in the game. This yeah. is the first game. Right. It was they was up thirty. Yeah. And I'm saying to myself, oh man, I should have put something on this game, not knowing what the spread was or nothing. I didn't want to get into that. It was twenty yeah. something. It was actually 26. Bub bet it. He bet it. and He, when, he laid the points with Duke? He yes. Bet, okay. When I called him, he was he wanted to break his phone because that was the only team lost on his ticket. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, how did you lose? He said, man, I bet the spread, which was 26, and these guys won by 23. And if you think about it, down the, you know, the I watched beat. the game. The damn one of the dudes who they put in, which is one of their greatest shooters, he, he tried to dunk the ball. Missed the dunk, team went down, scored a three, team got the ball again and scored a two. They went from being up 30, that which would they, they would have been they up 32. Covered, yeah. At least he would have just made, made a layup. They would have probably been up 32. It's crazy, but it's, that's why I don't bet all the time. That's why I don't sit there and do all of the points. You know, when the points <laughs> is crazy. You go of, money line. You just pick the winner. Regardless of how good the team is, man, I'm skeptical of I've going out that. there talking about 10 points or more they got to they gotta win by because you never know what can happen. I've noticed that about you, and I think it's I think it's your background as an athlete yeah. because you just know. You just know. Sure, you could be favored by all you want, <sighs> and you might win this damn thing, but it ain't gonna, you know, just because you put that number on a paper doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen. I've noticed that about yeah. you. You picked the straight-up winners. I, I want a straight-up winner. I, I, I want that team that they saying that's going to win by seven or less, and I'm like, all right, heads up, let's go. Give me the W. But uh, with that all said, the second game was one of the games that uh, I didn't know what to make of it. Yeah. I knew for a fact that it probably wasn't going to be uh, – they weren't going to beat them by 13. The only reason why the coach played for Coach K, he he uh, he coached on a, on the side of him. He was assistant for all those championship runs that Coach K, K had the last few years. And now he's at UCF. Mm-hmm. His son drops 30-something plus on – on on Duke and you got a guy in the middle named Taco. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's Taco. What he got in the middle of his Taco? That man Seven, got long, six. long arms and he's sitting up there batting everything. It was funny because when you first watched the game, he had two fouls and the game just started. And I'm like, oh, they doing what I thought that they probably should do, attack him. But man, the way he started the game with the little put back dunk. I'm like, this guy's playing Nerf basketball with everybody else. You know, he's like one of those Nerf baskets. You know, the basket you put on the back of your uh, door. Right. And you, and you think you're Jordan and anybody ah. else, you're dunking on your little brothers and your cousins, whoever come over to the house and play basketball right. in the room. He actually looked like the, the things that he did with the basketball were effortless. Uh, yeah. And when you watch the game kind of panned out, man, you really saw this game being one of the top games of the whole weekend. I, I mean, thought it was the best. It was the best game when it comes to watching. I know, I know most of the viewers see it that way. I mean, you can have, you can probably say Tennessee and Gonzaga, one of their games, but yeah. when it came down to one of the games you wanted to see, this was a heavyweight, you know, uh, bout that at the end, Duke almost found itself losing it. So it was one of the games that I wanted to see. I wanted to see Duke, you know, uh, get past a tough team. I thought it was going to be tough because of, you know, Taco being in the middle and they had some other guys that on the team that can pretty much play. And it was well coached. And when you think about championship teams, mm-hmm. the way you the way you build championship teams, it's not about blowing out teams. It's not out, it's not about being heavily favored. It's about being able to be, um, um, you know, tested in those critical situations, battle tested, battle tested and standing and withstanding some of those games where you can easily have lost. And I feel like that's one of those games that really tested the whole team of Duke and showed them that man, if we can get past these guys. Who pretty much knew everything. They they had our DNA in them. They had the coach. They had the player. They had a guy that pretty much knew us, you know, within the system. Yeah. If we can get past these guys, that allow us to know what our character is going to be like these 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 next games. You know what I mean? I think they're 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 suited to be that team at the end that should be cutting down the nets. 
And trust me, just because you won that UCF game doesn't mean that you're going to win a championship. No. I know that. But I think that— That could it, be their it, tough it, game, it, though. It proves a point. It proves to them that they can, they can go out there and yes. battle. They can I, battle with the best of them. I agree with you. Um, you brought up Johnny Dawkins' son balling out of control. I want to give some credit to Johnny Dawkins, the head coach. Listen, mm-hmm. he's a guy from D.C., first of all. Yeah. Um, and he's a dookie. And to me, uh, as much as I despise that program, um, I'll say this. Coach K can't coach forever. No. And so to me, let's say Coach K has be a, another him two or yeah. three years. Yeah. Maybe, right? Johnny Dawkins is the guy. Yeah. There's no – and he you the saw blueprint. it. Did you see at the end of that game they had this emotional exchange? Yeah. Um, he had the blueprint. He has a blueprint, and obviously they're tight. I think that's a guy that's going to coach Duke in the future. Nothing against UCF. You're a great school. But Duke or UCF. Kudos, kudos to UCF GM or, or, or general manager or whatever you want to go. Athletic director, AD. Yeah, the AD. AD. The AD has been solid the last few years because the football and basketball team is No, you're there. right. You're right. They're up there. All right, let's uh, go ahead and predict the Sweet 16, Tana. I have the matchups in front of me. Let's start and go in order. Thursday night, we get going. Uh, Florida State against Gonzaga. Who do you like in that game? That's a tough one. It's a rematch from last year. Florida State's uh, t- tough. 2018, uh, Florida State took down the Zags. Uh, both teams have been surprisingly better than last year. Florida State plays with great defense. They were a coach from one of the coach, uh, Leonard Hamilton, who was a coach at University of Miami when I was playing football there. Took our, took our team to um, the Mars Madness and took them deep a couple of times. Um it's hard to say, but I'm going to try to give Florida State the nod. Uh, I honestly believe that even with Zag playing the way they've been playing, they've been yep. playing lights out. They have a couple of good – they play great defense, great team ball. Florida State's big and inside, man, and they have some ballers, straight-out ballers. So uh, I'm going to give I'm gonna give Florida State the nod on that one. This is one in my bracket I got absolutely right in my Sweet 16, Gonzaga and Florida State matchup. I have Florida State winning the game, and I also have them covering – Gonzaga's favored by six, so jump on that Florida State line if you like making money. Mm-hmm. Uh, next game, Purdue, Tennessee. Woo, who do you like there? Tennessee, y'all. I don't know much about Tennessee. I've I've just watched them. Um, you bet on Tennessee a few yeah, times. I have, I have, because I just you know, like I said, I, I asked around who the favorites, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I bet I bet with them. Uh, Tennessee, like they brought it, they brought it in, in both games, mm-hmm. and it's, it's it's hard for me to not see these guys. You know, um, go to the next round. So I'm, I'm a bet with Tennessee. Yeah, I uh, I got this game. I had them playing Villanova. So what do I know? But I think Tennessee will beat Purdue. So I'm with you there. Uh, Texas Tech, Michigan, tough game, Tana. Texas Tech's playing well. Michigan's got the championship pedigree being had in the game Texas last year. Texas Tech being one of my teams up there in the Final Four. Yeah, me so, too. So I so have you're going Texas Tech. Tech. I'm going Tech. All right, we're both going Texas Tech there, but Michigan. I, I would not be shocked. Won't be that shocked way. either. Uh, that's a two-three matchup, so that's a good one. Oregon. That might be the best game of the night. Oregon's uh, Oregon against Virginia. Who do you like? Oregon was balling, man. You're gonna go Oregon, aren't Oregon, you? I, I don't want to say Oregon. I, I'm just saying they. Re- I, I have to give them that. You know, I have to praise them a little. Do bit. it. They was balling. Do it. Virginia, come on, show up. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a root it's for, a test. I'm a root for the hometown team. Virginia, All show right. up. Show All up, right. Virginia. Uh, so Tana likes UVA. Oregon is underdog by seven and a half points. Ballers, though. They ball. I think I would. Uh, I'm gonna middle this bet. I would take UVA to win. And I'll take Oregon to cover there. Uh, I think I have UVA losing in the next round to Elite Eight to Tennessee. So we'll see. I'm on point there. All right, those are the Thursday games. All right, Friday, LSU, Michigan State. Who do you like? Mm. <laughs> gotcha there on that one, huh? LSU's tough. Michigan tough. State's tough, too. That'll be a um, kind of a backyard brawl type of game, right? Maybe a bloody nose. Might the bet there might be not to take a side, maybe just take the under on the points. I'm not even sure what it is. I think it's 120 something. It's already kind of low scoring. Um, a tough one, man. Oh. By the way, these are in DC. I'm looking at the places where these play. This is in DC. How beautiful is that? We get the I'm Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. Me too. Uh, so LSU, Michigan State. Who you got? I'm gonna go with LSU. Really? I really, I really don't want to, but I'm gonna go with LSU. Mm, I got this one right in my bracket. I went Michigan State, but yeah, they went through a lot. They've been going through a lot with the coaches and everything, and it'll be good to see these guys um, push through and uh, you know make something of this tournament. So I'm gonna go, and you know how I am. I'm I'm one of those guys. I just go with the story. 
I'm, yeah, I, I like I like I like a good story. So they're an underdog. Their coach has all the drama. I yeah. mean, I'm yeah, it go, makes sense. I'm gonna go with LSU. Uh, Auburn, UNC. You're going UNC, right? I'm going UNC, but man, you gotta you got to give some recognition to this man Bryce Brown and that kid Harper. Yeah, lights out. One Bruce better, Pearl's a good coach too. One of the better backcourts that it is. Um, I'm looking forward to the matchup. Kobe White. Um, yep. I love him and all those guys. I think UNC is they play better defense than anybody probably in the tournament. Yeah, I think you can probably say them and Florida State and sure. probably put another team up there, but UNC has shown me that, like you said, you put your money on UNC winning yeah. it all. Yeah. And if I wasn't a, uh, going with the going with Duke, Duke, I would be. I would that be would riding, be your next bet. I would be riding. That could with be UNC. the championship. I think you had that as a yeah, championship. UNC and Duke. I want to see both of those guys at the end. So um, I think UNC is a little much. Much season, better season than these guys from Auburn, but you got to give praise to that backcourt in Auburn, man. Okay. Auburn, they are playing some good basketball, and I was, I was, you know, uh, uh, laughing looking at Charles Barkley sitting up there with the balloons and everything around him, and you can tell he was just sitting there with everything crossed, waiting for those guys to make sure they bring it home. But they, 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 they did it in a nice fashion. They, they right. did it, they did it well, and uh, I think it's going to be a good matchup. But I want to see UNC prepare. All right, and then uh, another one that's happening right here in the district, Virginia Tech against Duke. That's going to be a home game for Virginia Tech, essentially. Home game for for, right? uh, for V-Tech, but come on, Dukies, baby. Yeah. Come on, Zion. So Virginia Tech beat them in the regular season. And I'm pretty sure Zion wasn't wasn't playing. I feel like he might have been. He didn't play. I would I have to double check played. that. Um, regardless, I mean, they beat him with or without him. Duke is favored by seven and a half. Yeah, I think I'm with you. I think Duke wins the game. I take Virginia Tech to cover. I've look. I've watched a lot of Virginia Tech this season. The thing about them, they live and die by the three. Mm-hmm. So all those teams in the tournament all have the same fate, right? It, it's it's the age old. You live and die by it. So if you're on, you're you got a good chance to win. You'll probably win the game. If you're off, you're gonna get smoked. I think it'll be somewhere in between. I think Tech will – honestly, I think we'll go into that game. It'll be like the UCF game. I think we'll go into it and we'll go into the late second half and feel like, man, Virginia Tech might do this. And then whether it's Zion or, or Barrett or even mm-hmm. Cam Reddish, or even Reddish yeah. someone will make a play or two and Duke wins by four or five. And then Does you got to think sense? about it. Duke haven't played their best, best game yet. They haven't shot the ball well yet. They, That's what, true. They under 30% or, or something like that shooting from the field. They haven't shot but the ball well. But this might not be the game for that because Virginia Tech's familiar with them. Yeah, yeah. Same conference. Mm-hmm. I mean – I could see this being kind of a dog. I'm just fight. saying when you look at the whole matchup thing and and just seeing how Duke has been, you know, basically making it to where they're at right yeah. now. They haven't played the best basketball yet. No I doubt. I mean, yes, they play with a lot of energy. Yes, they play with, you know, two or three guys that are just dominant, you know, that they're going to win their their one-on-one uh matchups right. most of the time. Uh, I love what I saw out of Zion when he went against Taco cuz he showed that hey, man, regardless of how big he is, I'm going to bring it to you. So I look at it like this. These guys, like we said before, these guys are battle tested. But with all that said, they haven't played the best game that they can play. No doubt. And I know that's one of the things that's going to be the outcome of one of these games. Not sure if it's going to be this Sweet 16 matchup sure. or something later, you know, in the tournament. I think that when we see them win it all or get to that game where we say, whew, they just showed or proved to us that they're going to be the winners, they're going to play their best game. And I'm hoping that. They can win without playing their best game and save it for last. But if they have to show up, you know, come Thursday, they have to play their best game, then then let us see it. Because if they win it without shooting well, I'm scared for all the other for teams. When, they're when, it, when they're hitting it. Exactly. All right, good luck predicting this one. Houston, Kentucky. Houston is balling. Bro, I didn't know who's Houston. So I'm watching the game the other night, and I said, okay, you know, basketball should be over. I was at Lucky Strikes. Throwing a couple of them back, you know, <laughs> scuffing up their lanes, watching the games, and then um, I took it. I took a trip over to this little hookah spot, and um, that's the wrong thing to do. Mix what I had already had in me, and yeah, then, that's not a then, good look. Hit the hookah a couple of times, but I'm watching Houston, and I never thought I was seeing things. I was like, Is the hookah got my eyes going. Tanner crazy? was faded and feeling <laughs> X-rated. I'm sitting up there looking at my eyes, and uh, <laughs> Houston is balling, so I'm scared. I'm scared for those guys, man. Um, mm, 
Should I go with Houston? Should I go you with might as well. boys? You might as well. They Back then, they little. didn't want you. Now they hot. They all on you. Hey, they showed me a little something. I'm going to go with those H-Town boys. Mike Jones. All right, so, Tanner, I circled three games here mm-hmm. that I just feel like maybe you should put your money where your mouth is. I mean, don't call me crazy here, but Florida State against Gonzaga. You like Florida State. Gonzaga's favored by six. Uh, LSU against Michigan State. You like LSU. Michigan State's favored by six and a hook. Houston against Kentucky. You like Houston. UK's favored by two and a hook. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think Santana can make some moolah. moolah some moolah and rouge bet. on these games. What do you think about that, Tana, man? You going to bet? You didn't bet first round, bet. man. This ruins my life. I was scared. I didn't have that feeling. You know, sometimes I, I just have that feeling. I wake up in the morning like, I'm going to bet a thousand on somebody right now. Right now. One of them. I, I want a one hit quitter, man. I don't want that. I'm going to put $25 on this four team. Or no, I want a one hit quit. I want that one team that's going to bring it home. Count and it up. I Count it up. It. Count it. All right, let's go to taking L's. Um, this one, oh, I feel so good. Let me sit back for this one. Tana, do you remember taking L's several weeks ago now where um, I brought up a player who's near and dear to your heart, and I gave him a taking L's to your mind. Which was a little premature. Just take a look, Tana, just to refresh your memory. Your boy, LeBron James, who you were so happy went to the Lakers, is now three games out of the final playoff spot in the Western Conference with not a lot of games to play. Tana, I'm giving them taking L's because I don't think they're going to make it. So, Tana, now it's official like a referee. Blow the whistle. Your boy is eliminated mathematically. Practically, literally, figuratively, he's out of there. Forgot about it. But he's saying he's going to play every game still because he would never cheat the game. You know, like going to L.A. to make movies instead of win basketball. Who would cheat the game like that? But whatevs. (laughs) I'm giving your boy LeBron James to take an L again. It's all good, man. (laughs) You need a break. (laughs) You need a break? Give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. I can't. You need a break, you. man. I mean, I what, the last, can't. what, eight or nine years this man been in the finals? Really? He, he is the NBA basketball. He is the NBA postseason. And, you know, I've, I've heard I heard Stephen A. and those guys talking about it, you know, uh, what is going to be like without LeBron. Stephen A. said, hey, he's all fucked. You know, finally this guy get to sit back and watch everybody else. The basketball is kind of turning, you know, getting – Everybody needs to get ready because just like when, you know, Michael Jordan left the game, like when all the other greats, when Shaq and all those other guys, Kobe, it was somebody next or somebody new. Uh, LeBron James is the NBA. He, to me, brought in big dollars when it came to the finals because you knew he was going to get there to the finals. He was going to make it to that game whether they won it or not. He was going to get there. And to see this guy finally sit out there and to, uh, to be human, you know, he's not a god. He's a god. He's a king, but he's not a god. He's human. He's on a he's on a winning. I mean, he's on a losing team. He's been on a losing team for the last few years, but he's been the one winner because he's been the guy that's holding everything and on his shoulders and, and taking these guys, you know, to the distance. Oh, this is the first year he's gonna sit back in a, in a long time and probably watch and 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 try to build what he's trying to build so he can go out on a high note. So. Uh, yeah, I'm sad in that he's not going to be a guy that I can sit there and, and watch because I'm probably not going to watch that much yeah. of the NBA uh, playoffs because of him not being there. But, um, you know, LeBron finally has been proven that he, that he ain't the guy that everybody say he is. I think he still is that guy. You know, he's the king regardless of what everybody says. But he's just on a team, man, that just – you think about it like this, and I'm talking too long about it because I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have to prove anything you to you. You love the guy. I shouldn't have to prove anything to you. But when this guy went out with an injury, they was easily oh, fourth. Do we have violins to play, Rob? They was easily fourth in their division. And, and riding high, it, no telling what could have happened. And it's not alone just, just him that went out with an injury. Everybody went out with an injury. Ball and you name it. And the other guys ain't playing ball. I mean, the team sucked. And – he thought he can do what he was he been doing in Cleveland for so long, but the East is a whole different beast. He should have stayed his ass beast. in the East. He should have stayed in the East. Did. I want him to stay in the East, but the West is a whole different beast. So, oh well, man. You know he had to sit back this one. You know I I came so prepared to just butcher your boy, bash Brian, him. But all to be, you want to do is bash. I got to be honest with you, right? Now that he's out, 
and I, I feel like my point you was don't feel too, You don't feel too good I about don't. It. You know why? Because if I get Denver-Milwaukee in the finals, I'm jumping out the goddamn window. Who needs to see? I need LeBron in the playoffs because exactly. now I don't even care about these other people. Golden State's going to wipe everyone out, and if they don't, you get Houston against who? Philly? I don't care about that. And nobody ain't trying to see that old man play basketball. That, that boy, James Harden, play like my uncle. <laughs> Socks high. Dribble the ball too much and shooting everything. He running around in circles just to get open. Everybody sitting there, standing there like, pass the ball. He just sitting there dribbling and taking five steps back. He played, bruh, I definitely ain't trying to see that in the damn finals, but oh well. And shave your damn beard, James. Act <laughs> like you've been there before. <laughs> well, I think on that note, we could probably end this. <laughs> James Harden in the finals. <laughs> He won't make it there. He'll choke as always. Santana Mall Show Podcast is a wrap. Nice job, brother. It's a Santana Mall Show. Home of the Blue Ball Show. Number 89. Hustle all the time. Travis on the right. Hot mic on the left. Every single week, it's a lyrical fact.